So we got to speak with our outside voice, right? Outside voice. Yeah. All right. It's been a while since we had our last children's rally. September of last year. Last year was fantastic. A big turnout. I uh, think there was um, eight to 10,000 based on the pictures I saw. So hopefully on the first anniversary of the children's rally this coming September, we hope to have an even bigger turnout. And this is just a warm up, of course. We threw it together like within uh, <laughs> a few days, yes. So um, it's great that you did turn out and appreciate your your interest in this important topic to address what's happening to our children for the past several years. And I like to, uh, we're gonna have at least six or seven speakers. And our master of ceremony is David Creighton. You could follow him on his uh, vlog and channel on social media. So I'm going to hand it off. Is that okay, David? You ready? All right. So here's David. Thank you for coming. Well, hello, everybody. My name is David Creighton. Yeah, you can find me on Creighton Wright. I do a, a show every day called Stand on Guard. And what we're doing today is standing on guard for the Canada we all remember and we know can be again a canada that stands for righteousness and it's it is so nice to be here i'm not going to say too much before i introduce camille who is the organizer but i didn't want to touch on a few points because i think this is a very historic day because we're recognizing that despite of all the problems in the world and the division that this prime minister wants to sow between Christians and Muslims and Jews and Hindus and Sikhs, we are united on what matters, parental rights, and that the state does not raise our children, and that we raise our children. And I can't overemphasize that. You know, so what is this about today? When I was interviewing Camille to start, I said this was a protest and he corrected me. He said, this is a celebration, and this is a celebration. It's a celebration of children because we have a lot to celebrate today. As you all know, we had the first ever demonstration during Pride Week, so-called Pride Week, where we asked children to sit out the raising of the Pride flag or just not to go to school as a means of saying we don't support what's going on here. That protest was overwhelmingly successful from coast to coast. We had an average of 50% of children across Canada not going to school and to participating in those pride ceremonies. Now you won't see any of that in the mainstream media. And I've, I've reported that in my channel and I also write for the Post Millennial and Human Events New media is reporting this. The legacy media doesn't know what to do because they didn't think Canadians had it in them to push back and to say, no, you've gone far enough and you will go no farther. And so what this is about is instilling courage in parents across the country to say, leave our kids alone it's that simple leave our kids alone and let's get back to a sense of a country where kids go to school not to be indoctrinated in gender ideology not to have a constant barrage of the lbtq plus message not to be constantly immersed in sexuality in perversion and pornography in the libraries, but to actually learn something that's going to be a benefit to them as adults. 
I can remember a school system that tried to achieve that. It's certainly not the school system we have right now out there. I used to conduct a seminar about the Christian in the public forum. And I would say, can you imagine if in a Rip Van Winkle sense, you fell asleep in 1965, 1970 in that era, and you woke up today, you wouldn't believe you were living on the same planet. You wouldn't believe the moral degradation and the collapse around you. You would think you would have to be on another planet. But as analogy that I was taught as a youngster from an evangelical teacher I knew very well, if you put a frog in a frying pan and you incrementally, very gradually increase the heat in that frying pan, you can fry that frog alive. It's not like putting something into boiling water and immediately getting a reaction. You can, and that is what this country has done to so many children, parents, grandparents, mothers, fathers. They have been slowly seeing the heat incrementally rise in the frying pan and we have had our brains fried out by this government. And over the last nine years have been amongst the worst in terms of being exposed and being barraged and being attacked and being savaged by woke ideology from a government that doesn't know the meaning of mind its own business. Get your nose out of the family, get your nose out of the churches and the mosques and the synagogue, get your nose out of our business. Let us raise our children without your so-called assistance. I was very close to the Freedom Convoy. I'm very close to some of the participants in that who were incarcerated and are still on trial, namely Tamara Leach and Chris Barber. They found out what happens when you dare oppose this tin pot dictator who lives and works across the street here. They found out what happens when you dare to oppose woke ideology, when you dare to oppose the policies of this government it can come down very heavy on you. I saw one woman with a poster saying she was tasered and attacked by police for engaging in peaceful protest. Well, I was there during the entire Freedom Convoy and I saw that during the closing of that Freedom Convoy when this dictator named Trudeau invoked the Emergencies Act and brought the full force of the state down upon peaceful protests and I tell you, one more word, because this is all related. I interviewed a former border security agent on Thursday or Friday, J.J. Carroll. You might know him from Redacted. And half the people here come up to me and say, I see you on Redacted all the time. Yeah. And J.J. Carroll's on there quite a bit. And when I was speaking to him, he tied together the fact that there has been a dramatic and odious rise in the sexual trafficking of children at the Southern American border. 600,000 kids have been imported in the United States as sex slaves. 600,000. And he said, you know, Dave, it's not just about what's going on with the, with the child sex trafficking. It's what the governments in the United States and Canada also are doing to children with gender ideology and what's happening with Pride Month. And now it's called Pride Season. It is indoctrination and it is a war on our children. And this is why Camille decided to intervene. And I tell you, I take my hat off to Camille because he has done one hell of a job in organizing this. When he came to me a year ago and said that we're gonna have a million person march for children, I said, I don't, I don't say you can't do it, Camille, but that's going to be a high order. That's gonna be a large task to fulfill. He did it. Folks, a million and a half people came out last September 20th.
to say yes to parental rights and no to state control of your kids. And he's done it again with this walkout and, and making June about my child, June, not about pride season. So with that, I will introduce my friend, Camille L. Sheik.